So you're thinking about ditching the rat race and heading to Maine and becoming one of the 1.3 million people already calling this forested paradise home. Land of lobster rolls, lighthouses, and uh, let's be honest, a whole lot of nothing. Before you start packing flannels and snowshoes, let me hit you with a few facts about the pine tree state that might make you reconsider. Maine is a beautiful state that has a ton to offer you if you move there. It's just not for everyone. That's what we're looking at today. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 13, limited healthcare access. While Maine has some excellent healthcare facilities, access to care can be limited. Obviously, this is going to be in the more rural areas, and Maine has a lot of rural areas. This can be a major concern for individuals with chronic health conditions or those requiring specialized treatment. When you see healthcare grades on cities or states, you'll find that access to healthcare plays a major part in the ranking system. Doesn't matter how good the healthcare is, if people can't get to it or can't get appointments, it gets a failing grade. When they do have limited healthcare, you'll find that a lot of the outcomes and a lot of the chronic conditions are worse because people put things off a little bit longer if they don't have convenient access to a hospital. If seeing a specialist requires staying in a hotel the night before your appointment, a lot of people will just put off going to the specialist or the doctor. Sort of like a gym. If your gym is 45 minutes away, you're going to go to that one a lot less often than you do if your gym was five minutes away. And yes, I know there are those freaks in the world that'll go no matter what. I remember a story about the boxer Thomas Hearns who used to walk down some train tracks for like an hour when he was 12 years old almost every single day to go to the boxing gym. And that's the type of dude that becomes the world champion. Number 12, distance from family and friends. If you have family and friends in other parts of the country, moving to Maine can mean being far away from your support network and the people you love. And this creates a problem. Now, there's obviously the distance in miles that people can be away from each other. But when you have states like Maine that don't have a major airport nearby, like JFK, Atlanta, O'Hare, and Chicago, it makes that trip a little bit longer. I looked up flights from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine and Bangor, Maine, which is in the middle of the state. If you fly from Portland to Portland, it's not terribly bad. The soonest you can get there is about seven and a half hours. If you want to go to Bangor, it's a different story. You're looking at at least 11 and a half hours. You'll leave Portland, Oregon around 10, 15 in the morning. And the soonest you will get to Bangor is about 1230 in the morning. It's also about a $700 trip on the cheap. Of course, during the colder months of the year, you're going to run into a lot of weather delays. This is the northeast section of the United States. It gets cold and they get some pretty dicey weather. Just overall, Maine is a little bit further than it actually is. Number 11, the opioid crisis. Maine, like many other states, has been grappling with the opioid epidemic. This can lead to increased crime rates and social problems in some areas. Overall, Maine is a very safe state, but they have had their problems in places like Augusta. Now, are we talking Southside Chicago crime? Nowhere near that. Has Augusta ever been mistaken for Compton, California? Absolutely not. But for a state that is considered one of the safest, I think a lot of people might go there thinking that it has zero crime. It has crime, just nothing near what other states do. The opioid crisis and epidemic have led to a lot of other problems in the state, not just crime. But Maine was one of the harder hit states with that problem. West Virginia, obviously, being one of the worst, along with Ohio, Missouri, and Indiana. Is it bad enough that you should avoid the entire state? No, it's just something you should probably know about and keep in mind if you are thinking about moving to Maine. Number 10, limited educational opportunities. While Maine has some excellent colleges and universities, educational opportunities can be limited. And this has to do with the rural areas. This, for the most part, is a very rural state. And they don't have a lot of people. So if you don't have a lot of people, you're not building a lot of community colleges. The state doesn't have 70 universities like, let's say, California, Massachusetts, and New York. They actually only have three universities that have over 10,000 students enrolled. The University of Southern Maine, the University of Maine, and the University of New England. They actually have 11 universities or colleges that have less than 1,000 enrolled. They also had a lot of colleges shut down. Banger Theological Seminary, that shut down 2013. Bliss College, 72. Eastern State Normal School, 1942. Mid-State College in 2003. And a whole bunch more. They do have some good universities and colleges. They just don't have a lot of them. Some people will see this as a problem. 
Number nine, political climate. Maine, where the political landscape is about as random as a bag of trail mix. You've got your crunchy conservatives, your chewy liberals, and everything in between. So, if you love good political debate, you're in luck. Just be ready to dodge a few metaphorical snowballs from your neighbors. Maine is one of two states that splits its delegates, meaning their electoral college votes. Every other state, it's all or nothing. Myself, I think if they're going to keep the electoral college, they need to split their delegates. Cities and rural areas are very different. In a lot of cases, so many people live in the cities that the rural areas are kind of ignored politically. I don't know how they do it, but I think they need to do something. Well, that's just my own personal opinion. You know, I mean, you always hear the things about Oregon right now, how they want to split up the state because they don't get any say in the government. And that's because Portland has a large majority of the state's population. How Portland votes is how Oregon votes. Right now, Oregon has, I think, seven electoral college votes. Obviously, a lion's share of the electoral college votes has to go where the biggest percentage of the population is, and that's the cities. So give, you know, the cities or the western part of the state, however they want to do it, five of the votes and give the rural communities two. At least they have somewhat of a vote. Is it equal to the cities? No, they don't have as many people. That's one of the big arguments a lot of the rural communities have. Look, a majority of the state's land wants to vote this way. Well, land and acreage doesn't vote. People People vote. I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but I think that would be the step in the right direction. Number eight, it's an old state. Maine has one of the oldest populations in the country. So if you're on the hunt for a place teeming with young, vibrant energy, Maine might not be your top pick. But if you're looking for early bird specials and bingo nights, it's a gold mine. Maine has the oldest average age of 45. The next is West Virginia with 42. There's a couple other with populations where their average age is about 40. Everyone else is under 38. And if you look at the percentage of the populations of each state that is over 65, Maine wins that one by almost a landslide. 22.1% of Maine's population is over the age of 65. The next closest is Florida, which is a retirement haven. They're 21.3. After that, you drop all the way down to West Virginia with 20.9. Vermont, 20.6. The state with the lowest average age is Alaska, where their average age is 35. Number seven, a slower pace of life. Living in Maine is like hitting the slow motion button on life. If you're someone that needs action and excitement 24 seven, you might find Maine's chill vibe a bit like watching paint dry or even worse, listening to a 20 year old girl explain the dream she had last night about being besties with Taylor Swift. That is a long conversation that seems to be in slow motion. I had that conversation recently. It was painful. While listening to this story drone on and on, uh, me going, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm, the whole time I'm thinking, wow, I bet dental work would be funner than this. Number six, the rural lifestyle. If you're all about the fast-paced city life with malls, movie theaters, and doctors on every corner, along with mattress stores, rural Maine might make you feel like you traveled back in time to a simpler era. Picture this, charming small towns, endless nature, and a notable lack of traffic jams. If you're a person that needs to be around people and having conversation and you're living in rural Maine, your morning coffee is going to be a little quiet. You might end up talking to a moose in the morning. People will move to Maine because of the vast vast amount of rural land that they have. A lot of them get there and they realize it's just too quiet for them and they leave. I watched a video a couple years ago about people moving to rural Minnesota and it goes for just about any place that has rural land. A lot of people will move to the city and about half of them change their mind within a year and within two years they're back in the city. Very few people can make that switch, especially if they're under 50. Number five, high cost of living. The land of lighthouses and lobster rolls is expensive. Just like that diamond necklace you've been eyeing, Maine might be a little too much for most of our budgets. Maine is one of the lowest wage earning states outside the southern states we have in this country. And that makes the cost of living hit most blue collar workers a little harder than the rest. Groceries, housing, and heating costs in those charming coastal towns are brutal in Maine. The cost of living index in Maine is 111. The best way to look at that, and easiest way, is if you buy $100 worth of groceries in the average state, which in this case would be Pennsylvania, those same groceries would cost $111 in Maine. Now that's the dumbed down explanation of it. There's a lot that goes into that one. I use that all the time and some math guy emailed me. A better way to explain it would be like this. He went on to give me six paragraphs 
on the cost of living index. He said, that's the explanation you should give when you bring it up in a video. So basically, I would do a 15 minute video, which included a nine minute explanation of cost of living index. Number four, limited job opportunities. Maine's economy is all about tourism, fishing, and forestry. If you're not catching lobster, hugging trees, or helping tourists find the best place for clam chowder, you might have a tough time finding a job that pays more than peanuts. And to be honest, like I'd said earlier, the wages in Maine could use a little more love. They tend to be lower than other parts of the country, like I said, outside the South. So if you're looking to strike it rich in Maine by selling lobster rolls, this might not be the place for you. But if you have a knack for making, I don't know, seashell jewelry and carving wooden moose, by all means, move to Maine. I think Maine is a great option for people that have decent paying remote jobs. Back before Starlink, when everyone was worried about internet speeds before before they moved to rural areas, Maine was doing pretty good as far as coverage goes. Now with Starlink, I haven't tried it yet, but I've been hearing good things. Number three, bug season. Picture this, you're basking in the beauty of a Maine summer, but then you hear the unmistakable high-pitched whine of a mosquito, followed by its equally annoying buddy, the black fly. Suddenly, you're not just a nature lover, you're an all-you-can-eat buffet. These tiny tyrants especially love hanging around in the woods, ready to turn your peaceful hike into an impromptu dance party as you swat and dodge countless mosquitoes and black flies. If bugs aren't your thing, let's just say Maine summers might test your patience and your bug spray supply. Now, it is pretty rough there. Not as bad, in my opinion, as the South and Michigan for some freaking reason. Well, I know what the reason is. They have so many lakes and water and creeks and ponds. Just like Minnesota, the mosquitoes get insane. Well, Maine's right up there with them. You start dreaming about the snow. Number two, affordable housing. Trying to find a house in Maine these days? Well, good luck. The coastal areas are so popular, it's like everyone and their lobster wants to live there. Prices are shooting up faster than a rocket-powered seagull. And affordable options? <laughs> That's a joke. They don't have any. Those are about as rare as a sunny day in January. If you're new to the area, get ready to embark on an epic quest for budget-friendly housing. Now, to give you an idea what the housing is like in Maine, it's not the most expensive, but it's up there. Now it's hard to pin it down through a whole state, but they have the median housing price by each state. In Maine, it is $375,000. That's the median. The absolute lowest is Mississippi with 222,000. California is the absolute highest with 793,000. And people always ask whenever I bring up California's price, they're all, well, Hawaii's more expensive. Now they're actually 714,000, which is really high, just not as high as California. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to another state or another city, there's a link for home and money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. All right, on to number one. And number one, harsh winters. Maine winters, where your snow shovel and you become best friends. Your car learns to ice skate and you turn into a walking burrito wrapped in layers. If your idea of fun doesn't include turning into a human snowman or perfecting your penguin waddle on the icy roads, Maine's winters might just be your personal version of a frosty nightmare. Winters in Maine are brutal. You gotta be a little tougher than most to withstand a Maine winter. Really, the entire New England's pretty rough, but Maine being the North most state in the US, yeah, it could get rough. The Atlantic Ocean blowing right into that state too. My suggestion is spend a winter in Maine before you actually decide to move there. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.